What's going on? We're back for another week of Between the Pipes. Um, I was off last week. Uh, missed you guys. Glad to be back this week with you, Wade. How's it going? Archie, it's going good. Hockey's been back for, I mean, what is it now, a week and a half, two weeks. So yeah. it's nice to finally be able to sit down and watch some NHL, that's for sure. And it's good to have you back. And I just want to shout out to uh, Daniel. You did a terrific job last week, man. Really enjoy talking hockey with you and having you on the show. So we got things to get into. Archie, uh, how are you, buddy? Everything good? <clears throat> yeah, I'm good. Um, careful what you say, because Daniel might uh, try to kick me out. He was already saying how he missed it. He enjoyed it a little too much. Um, <laughs> so take a seat, bud. If uh, if we ever need you again, we'll call you in. But right now you're on that taxi squad there. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. I mean, there's uh, there's a Leaf game going on right now, which obviously is is what – we care about um yes. but while we are in discussion we'll, we'll go through a few things around the league we'll start off with our beloved maple leafs and um some rough news for leaf fans joe thornton um set to miss at least four weeks with a rib fracture um i'm i'm actually shocked it's a rib fracture uh when i saw the play happen the way he kind of flung off the glove had it under his other arm I thought it was a wrist injury. I thought, oh my God, he just broke his wrist. Something happened. This guy's done. Um, and then they announced a rib fracture. And it's unfortunate. Four weeks is it's a long time, especially in a shortened season. And um, I, I feel like, you know, he hasn't been a superstar by any means, but he's played his part. He's played his part. He's played it well. And now we're without him among some other players. But what's your take on uh, Jumbo Joe and his injury here? So, Archie, man, it sucks that I couldn't uh, be in contact with you about this earlier on because as soon as he got hit, I knew it was uh, – I knew it had to do with something in the abdominal, something in the rib area, and um, mm -hmm. I've cracked ribs before. And the way that he was just lined up on the boards, the way you kind of hunched over and looked like, ah, you know what I mean? I I felt the same kind of pain. It's like the wind gets knocked out of you, but you know something's torn and there's something wrong. And the way he skated the bench, he went there, uh, the whistle went, um, he sat on the bench there and he was almost, I thought, you know, just shaking it off for a second. All of a sudden the camera focuses in on him and, uh, and then the next whistle blows and he ends up getting up and just walking to the tunnel. So I knew something was severely wrong, man. Um, a lot of people were saying it, it was the injury. I've heard that from a couple of my peers, but Man, I, I kept telling people, I'm like, listen, I think it's ribs. It's got to be ribs, man. Just the way that he kind of hunched over and the way that he got hit there, I, he just got clipped in the wrong way on the boards. And, man, it looks like such like a helpless hit. You know what I mean? Like nothing yeah. really – it's not like Buddy stormed him to him or gave him anything dirty. kind of just finished his check on him and, bam, that, that's how quickly things change for your hockey career. And at uh, 40, uh, 42 years old or, or whatever Thornton is there um, – that's unfortunate. Let's just hope that he heals up a lot quicker than than he's expected to. I, I know it's a month. Let's let's hope it's a month and not you know five yeah, six exactly. weeks because you never know with older bones, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. And it, it it's almost like it reminded me of Gilmore's return uh, to the Leafs. How it was the most anticipated return. We were all excited, gearing to go. The most innocent. I wouldn't even call it knee on knee contact. It was almost like they brushed each other and. And boom, Gilmore's career is done. And it was just, you know, and you're right, at, at the old age and 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 sometimes the angle of the hit and how it happens, uh, your bones just aren't the same anymore. And uh, we definitely wish him a speedy recovery. Hopefully, like you're saying, hopefully it's at max four weeks, not being anything beyond that. I mean, um, yeah. from a conditioning standpoint, I don't see Thornton needing that much time to kind of get back into it. But um, you're right, I can't imagine how much pain – a rib injury is, um, especially after hearing even, uh, what's his name there from Team Canada, the goalie, Levi. Levi going through it too. He had a fractured rib as well. Insane. Insane. Well, and I think I, it was the kids, right? They're younger, different bodies. If I'm going to touch on that, just by yeah. my experience, man, rib injuries suck. Um, when you cough, it hurts. Like it hurts mm -hmm. like hell. When you sneeze, it hurts like hell. Like, you're almost crying before you sneeze because you just know how badly painful it's going to be. So rib injuries do take a little bit, a little while to heal. And uh, unfortunately with those types of injuries, 
you just have to let your body heal the way it's going to heal. So it's not like they can really go in there and operate on them. And I, unless you really shifted the, the bones over and they have some kind of medical procedure to, to mess around and realign the bones. But from my experience and from what doctors told me, you just got to let it set and uh, let it heal on its own. So I wish, I hope in that uh, Joe Thornton, his ribs uh, just come together and, and they uh, they heal properly. So, but yeah, no, it's not fun uh, cracking ribs, but it hurts like a bitch. I'm telling you. Absolutely. And that leads us to our, our next star. Um, this one stings a little more because it was kind of um, mixed communications. I don't know. So Austin Matthews not playing tonight. Um, he left practice before it actually even started on Thursday uh, there were some videos, footage of him skating around, doing his pre-practice routine. Seemed fine, talking to some of the bench coaches out on the side there. And um, all of a sudden, before Keith can blow the whistle to kind of bring everybody in, he's off and uh, didn't come back. Um, they said he wasn't feeling well, and that was the end of it. And then all of a sudden today, confirmed out of the lineup with what they're calling an upper body injury. Makes you wonder... Could this be stemming from those crazy cross checks he took to the back against Montreal? He took some pretty hard hits there. Um, could it be that? Could it be something else? What do you think on that? Listen, man, we're <laughs> we're Toronto fans here, so all this Austin Matthews just missing a game or two for a day to day injury is is a is a massive deal, and uh, when it really shouldn't be that big of a deal. And um, whatever way he got injured, I mean, I just, you know what, it sucks going online. And then you read, oh, Matthews is getting traded. Matthews and Keith are yeah. having problems internally in the dressing room. Matthews doesn't get along with the Tavares and the leadership role. Man, that's what it's like <laughs> being in Toronto market. It's just so fucked up, man. Like you hear so much crap about everything and, the, and so many trolls come on and really try to grab your mind and, and manipulate you into thinking that there's actually something wrong when Archie, it's a day-to-day -day injury. The guy, uh, we didn't know if he was sick or whatever. Maybe he wasn't feeling other weather, obviously with COVID-19 at large and everything, that was the most concerning thing. Like, Oh my goodness, does Austin Matthews have COVID-19? Cause if he does, that means that there's going to be other players from the team sitting out. But fortunately, fortunately it's not. And it's just a day-to-day. -day. I'm hoping that, he maybe misses today and maybe another game or two, and then he's back in the lineup uh, ready to go full and healthy and ready to race for a rocket Richard. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah. Yeah, and funny enough, COVID was the, the last thing on my mind because he had already gotten it um, earlier on in the offseason. But, again, yeah. th there's nothing to say that he can't get it again, right? But, um, yeah, I mean, you're right. It, it's a day-to-day -day thing, I guess, with the shortened season. And you're right, with the drama in Toronto and, and the crazy fan base that we have here. Um, everything's under the spotlight, right? And and I heard that too. He doesn't get along with Keith. He doesn't get along with Marner. The all baloney. Like, cause it, honestly, up until two, three years ago, when all those guys were on their social media, they all hung out together doing everything. Something happened somewhere along the lines where they were told, "Hey, cut the social media." It sounds like um, every NHL team, every sport, really might be might taking that direction, but they suddenly dropped like the activity on social media dropped drastically from a few years ago when these guys all started to kind of gel together. So right away, what did people start assuming? Oh, Nylander and his contract, Marner and his contract, they're all not getting along now. Everybody hates each other. And it's like, I don't buy it. And, and again, it's the Toronto media, the Toronto fan base, always looking to nitpick at things and try to find things that aren't there. And like you said, just to try to grab our passion and mess with us. Right. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, hopefully it's just like a, an innocent thing, whatever. He's ailing, aching. I mean, scored a hell of a goal the night before. It's too bad we didn't win that oh, game. Yeah. He wasn't even looking at where he was shooting that puck. But he knew. He knew. He found that little bit of space. It was no accident. He knew what he was doing. Um, so it, it was great to see him score that goal. Uh, vintage Austin Matthews, you know, making some magic happen with that puck on his stick. Um, but, yeah, we'll see what happens. And, I mean, the Leafs are already without Robertson as well, so they – Quite a few line shuffles. I haven't been able to catch much of the game tonight so far, but um, it'll be a great opportunity for some of these guys to step up. Nylander started the season really well, kind of went cold. Great time to step up right now. McKayev's had his chances. Would be a great time for him to start showing up. Hyman, maybe try to get on the goals goal sheet, you know. 
Um, I'm confident. I mean, the Oilers, considering the team they've got on paper, got slapped out by Montreal two games in a row. And I'm talking like a clinic. So I'm not too worried. And I mean, it's still early in the year, but hopefully we can come out of this with a, a better performance than we did uh, on Wednesday night against them. Um, speaking of hot on the ice, Tyler Toffoli. Five goals, two assists in five games for the Canadians. This guy's playing like he's fresh out of college. Like, I, I, it's crazy. And I know you you like talking about this too because he's just he's been on fire. Man, Tyler Toffoli. I know you guys hear me say this a lot, but it's another uh, Scarborough native. This guy's <laughs> from around here. Yeah. Um, dude, he when he went to Montreal. I knew he was going to fit right in just because that's his style of game, man. The way the, the, uh, the way that Montreal plays, man, the system that that team buys into every year. I knew that it was the perfect system for Tyler Toffoli, man, just a hard gritty game, go to the net. And uh, I don't, I don't know how Montreal does it every year. They just, they find these guys on either waivers or on, on a trade that just, they're hard working hockey players, man. And they, and they play, they play with their hearts on their sleeve every night. And Tyler Toffoli is an example of that, that we knew that coming into the season, Tyler Toffoli was going to score, you know, in a 56 game season. Okay. I think they'd be happy with like 15 goals and maybe like, you know, uh, 10 assists or something, you know, from a player of his stature, but five goals in two games. He had the Hattie there the other night. This kid's on fire, man. Uh, he's he's a hard-nosed guy to play against. He's kind of uh, not on the same uh, level as Gallagher when it comes to the grittiness and getting getting deep and standing in front of the net. But he definitely brings some type of uh, caliber caliber uh, close to what Gallagher does. And mm-hmm. Montreal brews players to to play like that, man. It's like they sit them in a little room and they friggin' just I don't know. They brainwash them into being these types of players. So I wish sometimes I wish that Toronto had a little bit of that, man. It's like uh, yeah. Montreal's always ready to start and to, and tear your head off and, and play like it's the last minute of the hockey game usually. And, you know, a nice steady game consistency is huge in Montreal and Tyler Toffoli coming from LA, you already knew what you were going to get. And uh, well, I guess he came from Vancouver, right? From most yeah. recently, but uh, in LA, he was a problem. Uh, he had a great career in LA. Went to Vancouver, a uh, little bit in the shadows. Maybe the system wasn't right for him. Um, lots of star end, uh, heavy young talent that was coming up. So maybe he didn't get the the right uh, t- uh, the right power play time that he thought on like the second line or the right shift or whatever. But going into Montreal, he fits right in. I think he's on the top six line right now, and he goes and they play hard, man. And good for Tyler Toffoli, Scarborough native. Uh, good on you, good Canadian kid, man. And speaking of Scarborough natives, uh, we've got a couple of guys chiming in here. Apparently, Simmons has hands of stone. We should be up to nothing by now. Um, I can only assume he's missed some golden opportunities. We saw Spezza miss a wide open net the other night, um, which he was quite upset with him over uh, with himself about because uh, he went to the bench and pretty sure smashed his stick a couple times. Um, we got Tyler chiming in. I learned so much about hockey by watching and listening to you both. Another awesome show. Thank you, Tyler. He's one of our resident wrestling guys. Um, promised me that he would start to kind of engage and learn more about hockey. So here he is. Awesome, uh, man. Welcome. Wrestling guys. Um, another one. What's up, guys? Joe, thank you. What's up? Um, Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. So we move on to the big saga right now, the big conversation going on. Pierre-Luc Dubois and good old Tortorella, Coach Torts. Um, so the latest was Pierre-Luc Dubois plays three minutes and 55 seconds in a game that they end up losing in the overtime, and Torts comes back and says the onus is on the player. He's basically calling him out. Um, they keep showing the same replay of what they're calling a lackluster effort. Dubois just looked like he wasn't even trying on the play, just didn't seem to have the fight. He wants out. He's made it clear he wants to be traded. Everybody knows Tortorella is a hard ass. The guy does not care. He will make an example out of anybody at any given time um, with no care in the world. And and it's clear it's happening now. And I think today there was the whole, he doesn't even know if he's going to start 
at all in the next game. How long do you think this goes on before they actually move Dubois to another Man, team? Archie, <laughs> trade Pierre-Luc Dubois as soon as possible, man. Yeah. You can't have that in the dressing room. You just can't. It's a similar situation to Matt Duchesne when he was in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Told the media, he told his teammates that he kind of wanted out. He was done with Colorado, didn't like what was going on there. And uh, they made him play, like, I don't know how much longer, but he played for at least a, like a, at least a few months or something, Colorado yeah. hockey. And he was just off. And it's not good for the dressing room. It's not good for the fan base to know that your one of your star players doesn't want to play for your hockey team. Listen, Tortorella... You can't teach an old dog new tricks, man. There's that saying. This guy's been coaching in the league. He won a Stanley Cup like a decade and a half ago, whatever it was, like 17 years ago, right, with the Lightning. He's uh, coaching in his old ways. Um, obviously, he's a bit hard-headed. And like you said, Archie, he has no problem exposing people in the media and letting pe- and letting, uh, letting the media know like what he thinks exa- exactly about his players and uh, what's going on in his own hockey world. So... Uh, he doesn't shy away from nothing. And Pierre-Luc Dubois, man, this guy wants out. Trade him now. You're just hurting your team. You're hurting the chemistry. And you're hurting your chance at going any further. One last thing about Columbus Blue Jackets. I brought it up before. Archie Bobrovsky didn't want to stay. Free agent. They had a good team at that time. Gone. Uh, Artemi Panarin, their leading goal scorer, was playing great. Atkinson had a great year that year. Dubinsky, Foligno, Seth, Seth Jones, um, Wierenski, Bobrovsky. These guys had a team. And, and that's and that's including, not including Pierre-Luc Dubois, who was up and coming. And, uh, man, it just sucks that this is going on for the Columbus Blue Jackets right now. I don't know what's going on in Columbus, Ohio, but players don't want to friggin' play there. And it's unfortunate for the NHL. And I don't know if it's because of the city itself or it's because of John Tortorella. If Tortorella is the problem uh, and you've had Panarin, Bobrovsky, and now Pierre-Luc Dubois want to walk out at this point, we're talking about a 22-year-old kid that should yeah. is having all – this organization drafted him, has thrown everything to him, has developed him, and all of a sudden he's just like – like, he doesn't even want to play anymore. And now he's sitting and playing three minutes a game? Like, come on. Get rid of him. Get a trade going as soon as possible. The season is still young enough for him to go and build chemistry and build rapport with, with a new organization. So that's my thoughts on that, man. But Columbus, I don't know what's going on. Tortorella, I, I don't know how much longer Tortorella's going to be coaching in the NHL because it seems like he's getting a little bit of the Babcock treatment. And Babcock is now on NBC. So... <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens, Arch. I don't know. And and great segue, because that's the next topic here. Mike Babcock. I had forgotten about this and finally breaks the silence. So um I've got to show something that I thought was the funniest thing I've seen yet about this whole situation. <laughs> Mike Commodore. Mike Commodore's tweet, or uh yeah, tweet. Folks, Babcock let one year pass, and now he's on the Rehab My Image Tour. Don't let him fool you. Every word that comes out of his mouth is bullshit. He's a bully. Babs, you're lucky you weren't outed 15 years ago. You made your money. Now fuck off, you arrogant piece of shit. Hashtag fuck Babs. (laughs) Commodore did not hold back. Talk about telling us what you really think. Um... Yeah, I mean, Babcock is coming out saying, you know, it was an innocent mistake and that he quickly approached Marner about it when this whole thing happened about that that list and, and who ranked where and all this nonsense. What Do you, do you think Babcock's trying to play things down or is there more to this Commodore thing? Commodore's obviously got something personal against Babcock since they He's were. <laughs> obviously, obviously personal, some, some issue from back in the past that he's dealt with that he's had himself or he's seen thrown upon another player or he's heard. So the stories around the league about Babcock, once the Marner story came out about him uh, ranking the players, um, 
ranking the Maple Leafs at uh, whoever gives the best effort from one to 25 or whatever. And then uh, when that story broke, that was uh, kind of the nail in the coffin for Babcock there too. And then you hear the Johan Franzen story about how he kind of uh, uh, down uh, looked down upon him and um, kind of exposed him in a bad way in front of his teammates. So uh, you hear about that from older older hockey and stuff, and obviously it's not it's not under surveillance like it is now. And and uh, I mean you can't really get away with with the type of stuff that happened as uh, as uh, Gilbert Dion was saying. You know what the coaches would do back in the day, and the yeah. player to coach uh, little arguments and fights that would happen behind the behind locker doors. So that being said, Archie Babcock to me. Listen, there's one thing that uh, my dad said, and it stuck with me about Babcock. He always talked about being a friendly, family-oriented person, but never did this man ever come on and mention anything about his kids or his wife or anything, right? Like, it was like he was playing the image of, oh, you know, Tavares is a... Tavares is a good family guy. That's why he's going to be the captain because uh, he's got the experience. He's, he's a family guy, this and that. And it's just like, yeah, but dude, you never ever talk about your family or anything. And like, you you don't smile a lot. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you just don't seem like that kind of dude, but you're portraying to be like that. So I kind of see what, I kind of see what he's saying there in his tweet. I mean, who knows for all we know, what do we really know? We had Babcock as our as a coach in Toronto for what was it? We had him for uh, since 2015. So 2015 yeah. to 20 the uh, whatever we had him about four or five. It was like four years or whatever. Something so like I'd like to think that I know Babcock, and by his tweet, dude, I can kind of see where he's coming from, man, because he might be trying to portray this image of oh, you know, I made some mistakes, and he, maybe he just wants to get back in the hockey game because no friggin' organization wants to hire this guy and he knows he's out of a coaching job and that's that, that's his livelihood that's what he loves how else are you going to get him back into hockey at his age you're going to try to go to social media and those types of platforms and that's what he's doing that's why i don't think he's going to be the only one that tweets something negative about babcock trying to do this i think other players will come out and fucking back him up and say the same kind of crap that he's saying about babcock because we single-handedly kind of seen it, right, Arch? I don't know. Like, what do you? What's your perception on Babs here? Yeah, you're right. And and in my um, my couple of years that I was I was working down there, I got to see a a, a behind the scenes side of Babcock um, that not many can say they have. So, um, interesting guy with an interesting routine. He'd be there first thing in the morning. Like I'm talking, we're still setting up benches and ice and whatnot at 6 a.m. and Babcock's pulling in. Um, and he had his routine. He had his thing. When the players were on the ice, very rarely was Babcock on the ice with them at the same time, right off the hop. It was usually the other coaches on the ice and Babcock's running laps in the concourse at Scotiabank arena. I found this crazy. Like here I am, you know, heading towards the train and, and he had this thing. If, if someone was in front of him while he was running, he just yelled left, right. So you knew which way he was passing you on, which I thought was hilarious. Okay. And, um, the first time it ever happened to me, I turn around. I'm like, who the hell is that? And and I see Babcock run by. I was like, wow, interesting. They've got a <laughs> state-of-the-art gym in that arena. Like, Toronto players have the cat's ass when it comes to what they get as players, coaches, and all that. Um, but he was old school, running around the arena, up and down the stairs, between seats. Um, but very, very secluded, very his own – in his own world kind of thing. And um, – and you can see it translating on the ice and even in interviews, you know, not much a, a, a guy for words. You know, like we we had experienced um, Paul Maurice, who I thought was great with the media. I, I love listening to that guy talk because the sarcasm that came out of his mouth was just on another level. But every sentence, every yeah, sentence. But, but he spoke, right? He spoke about the team. Babcock almost looked like his was um, pre-written, almost like it was all scripted. Uh, kind of similar to those, you know, we got to get the pucks in deep conversations you hear with hockey players, just yeah. your typical lines. And no, his, right. Archie, his was, you got, we were just going to play right. We got to play right. That's yeah. all he ever said. That, that was his pucks in deep. And that's the <laughs> thing, right? right. And, and look at what happened with Brian Burke. They, they tried to, it's almost like this is the, uh, their um, probationary period. Again, they put him in front of the media. You're in the spotlight. All eyes are on you. You better fix your shit. 
So it's worked with Burke. I think this is the longest we've ever seen him wear a tie properly on TV. And as the days go by, he's looking more and more um, professional in, in his role on TV. So maybe yeah. this is Babcock's interview for a potential job with Seattle or, or somewhere else. I don't know that Seattle would be a good option for him. Um, but then again, it may very well be because you may see a lot of older players going there who, who may not take his shit anymore. Whereas the younger guys are, are a little bit afraid and intimidated. Um, he does have the intimidation factor. So, um, yeah, I don't know how many people are going to want to listen to him talk on TV because you can barely hear him because he mumbles. Um, but, um, it'll be interesting. I, I'll watch, I'll watch for a bit. I'm curious to see how he's going to handle the media because it's, it's a different world where you're not, um, out there pointing finger at the play of the team. And now it's just spotlights on you, but make it work. Yep. Um, so moving along the next big story, which I thought was hilarious. Our buddy, Alex Ovechkin and his fellow Russian teammates. So yeah. Ovi, Kuznetsov, Orlov, Samsonov, all added to the COVID list does not mean they've got COVID, but they broke protocol. And the team was also fined a hundred thousand dollars for the players breaking the violations. And then Ovechkin comes out the next day and, and takes full responsibility as he should as a captain and as a leader. But, um, Sounds to me like it was just a bunch of Russian buddies trying to have a good night after a game. Turns out, maybe I believe they may have been in the same hotel room. The restrictions they have on these guys are a little ridiculous considering they're playing together on the ice. They're hogging after goals. They're yeah. sitting next to each other on the bench. I don't see an issue with these guys hanging out in hotel rooms together. Kind of lame. Um, steep fine, $100,000. I mean, I know it's chump change for an NHL team, but... I don't know that it was really necessary and to, to now essentially suspend these guys uh, by putting these guys on this list, they're all guaranteed to miss, I think four or five of the next games. That's a big blow to a team to take four of four pretty key players out of their lineup um, for something that I find is a little bit silly, a little bit silly. So I think it's bullshit, man, to be yeah. totally honest with you, Arch. Um, Ovechkin's wife came out, she tweeted something pretty nasty to the NHL, basically stating, how could you humiliate, you know, four Russian players after the whole NHL has these players isolating and doing their own thing and sticking together as a team? And she mentioned what you mentioned, Archie, 100%. about they're on the ice with other players from other teams playing against each other on the bench, hugging each other after big goals. Uh, talking face to face with each other with no mask on, but you're going to publicly humiliate the four Russian stars on uh, the the Washington Capitals. It's like, uh, why are you exposing them like this? Why are you doing this? Why is NHL coming hard down on Ovechkin, Orlov, and Samsonov and these guys? Right. So I see the point of what she was saying, and I I totally agree, man. I mean, yeah. uh, I think it's stupid. If these guys are getting tested for COVID-19, uh, you know, on a regular basis, and they're playing hockey together, these guys are working out in gyms together, high-fiving each other and everything when they score a goal. Like, if they're going to catch co – like, if it's if it's going to come down to that, Archie, then cancel the whole bloody hockey season if you're yeah, that exactly. freaking frightened about – players sitting next to other players and and having a drink of water or, or having a fucking pint you know what i mean like that's just ridiculous that they would do that and then, and then on top of that the bigger pit the the pitcher on top of that is now these guys are out of the lineup for a few a few games what three or four games they said yeah like four or five. That, like is, that is a joke. That's a friggin' joke. I can't even believe that the NHL would allow this to pass, man. You're talking about one of the greatest players to play the game, and he's out now. It's a shortened season already. Ovechkin's getting older. This guy wants to win another Stanley Cup in the Washington, in the city of Washington. Great fan base, has been for years. They do not deserve this. The players don't deserve this. City of Washington doesn't deserve this. The franchise doesn't deserve this. And mm -hmm. us as fans don't friggin' deserve this punishment. We should we should boycott this crap, man. And, like, I, I don't understand it at all, Arch. I don't know what your feelings are about it, but I feel like you agree with me, man. I agree 110%. Gary Bettman, I know you're not watching, right. but this was by far your biggest dick move um, to, to have this even happen and allow it to happen. And even, like you said, to humiliate these guys. Like, 
We're talking Alexander Ovechkin. How would it be if we, let's say we flip things around and Bettman's poster boy, Sidney Crosby, was the one in Ovi's position? Would this have come out? Would this have even been in the news? Um, would the same fine have applied? I don't think so. And to be honest, um, it, it's a kick in the nuts, man. Like Ovechkin is by far one of, if not right now, I mean, in my opinion, the greatest player actively playing in the NHL. And to to do this to him and also his three teammates, and, and it doesn't look good that all four of them are Russian. And, you know, it, it, it looks it's really – publicly shaming, bud. It's public yeah. shaming, right? Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's it's very um, I, almost school like like yeah. I'm gonna punish these the grown men who are obviously being responsible. They've got families. They've got you know teammates. It's not like they were out at a strip club like some other athletes have been in other sports. That's a different story. That's being irresponsible. You're being reckless. These guys were hanging out in the hotel that they're staying at. They're practically living there. And amongst themselves, like I, I don't see the issue. I really don't. It, it's stupid. <laughs> I don't understand it, Arch. Uh, training camp for the Leafs. That short period there. Who was in the friggin' picture uh, of of all the guys quarantining together? Thornton, Matthews, Nylander, whoever else. There was like uh, there was like five was of like them. five or six players. It's yeah. the same bloody thing, right? Like what the hell is going on here? Except these guys are on the road in a friggin' hotel room with their teammates. Like, uh, you know what? It's what, what a, I can't believe we even have to have this discussion. That's just horrible, man. I, I don't like it at all, man. I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that. They're being penalized for this at all. And I don't like that. We're not going to get to see, uh, the uh, the right uh, Washington Capitals on the ice now. We're gonna have to wait another week now before we yeah. see Ovechkin and the and the boys back, and uh, they could potentially lose out on eight points. That's because thing, of this it's mess. Crucial. It's absurd. It's absurd. I can't believe it, man. What, yeah. what are you gonna do though? Like I, I don't know. I think uh, I think the players and the league should come together, unite, and. Uh, and, and sign a petition or something against this. I, it's horrible. Imagine we come down to the end of the season and, and Washington they, doesn't make the playoffs because of that, that eight point differential that they probably would have had a really good chance at winning because let's face it, Washington is a good hockey team. And yes. um, again, I, the fact that Gary Bettman hasn't even come out and publicly spoken or addressed the situation just goes to show like a turtle, when something happens, he pulls his head into his little shell and just disappears and lets the media make what they want of things. But this was his job. This You want to win back people. You want to have people not boo at you when you get up and talk about anything. This was your moment. And, and you dropped the ball there too because if he would have come out and said, hey, listen, guys, I think we're taking this a bit too far. Let's take a step back and see exactly what the issue was. If yeah. there even was an issue, and let's address it. To just automatically smack them all with that, and then to, to even the hundred thousand dollar fine to the team, it's a joke. It's, yep. it's so stupid, and, and I and I hate to even mention it, but we had to talk about it because I feel like it needed to be addressed. Um, of course. Yeah, hopefully stuff like this doesn't continue to happen because it will ruin the season, um, and and it's going to really take away a lot from from teams in their system. So hopefully that that's the end of it, and they've made their example, and, and hopefully nothing else goes on. You could um, probably make that example with every friggin' team in the league, Archie, and they yeah. try, and somehow it fell right on the Washington Capitals' lap. I don't know how, I don't know why, yeah. but it did, and it's a joke. Anyways, um, so we got a couple players uh, with some pretty serious injuries outside of the ones we already spoke of with the Leafs. Um, Josh Manson is set to be missing approximately six weeks due to an oblique muscle injury. Um, sucks for him because he. I know a lot of teams were looking at him when he was a free agent and unfortunately now six weeks on the sidelines is a long time to be missing um, again on a short season. Um, in addition to him, we kind of touched base on this before the show started. Montreal Canadiens, Joel Armia uh, suffered a concussion after I'm calling it a headshot. You made a good point. Uh, Tyler Myers is a big guy. He's a tall guy. He's got some height on him. So he committed to a hit, which you were absolutely right about as well. Um, he was already in the path of that hit, and unfortunately, Joel Armia being shorter, having his head kind of tucked down, 
I still saw from a lot of the replays, there was one from a distance that kind of saw it from behind. It looked like it was shoulder to chin. Regardless of the fact, it was lights out for Joel Armia. Like it was, it was one of those hits that made you cringe in your seat just watching. It's like, whoa, like, wow, that was a big hit. But um, not even a discussion. I feel like if it was um, maybe a, a usual suspect, you know, like a, a hard-hitting player, um, a Brendan Gallagher, somebody who's been in the spotlight before for a hit to the head, it may have been treated differently. I feel like maybe there would have been a suspension. Um, Tyler Myers is not exactly somebody who doesn't hit. He lays the body, but not even a discussion. And uh, now Army is out with a concussion. Not sure how long he's going to be out for, but I feel like he's going to end up on uh, long-term IR for a while as well. It's a friggin' uh, freight train coming through you, man, with uh, d- dark at night with the headlights on, but and that's all that Army has seen. It's unfortunate, dude, and uh, and just going off of what you just said, man. Imagine Archie, if uh, imagine if this was Patrick Kane or Sidney Crosby on the other end of that. You yeah. think Tyler Myers would be walking away without a suspension? Hell to the no, but it's because it's our Mia. Unfortunately, he had himself a game too. I think he popped in two goals that game or something. So, um, yeah, just touching a, a base with the hit itself, man, it's NHL hockey. Any player will always tell you that things happen fast, like really fast. Hmm. Tyler Myers committed to the hit. So he was going in, he had the glide on his shoulder was down. And unfortunately, Armia was in a vulnerable position. He was kind of looking back at the puck. That means there's a leaf the goal. They're up one nothing from the sounds of it. Anyways, uh, but he was looking back, and I can see where the NHL. I can see where the NHL was thinking. Maybe we don't find this guy because it would have been a clean hit because he still had the puck and he just wasn't looking where he was going. But then again, he was in a vulnerable position and. Myers easily could have went up and just kind of stick checked him or not played the body as hard. But this is the NHL guys too. Tyler Myers is 220 pounds, six foot eight on skates or whatever. So you always got to be aware when guys like that are on the ice. And like Archie said, he's not a dirty player. Uh, I think he's been maybe suspended once before. So it is what it is. That shit happens. And, uh, I know they're trying to get rid of that out of the game, but hockey's fast, man. And, uh, and those split second decisions, it, 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 it's just, it's shitty that it happens to players and that's how they get hurt. But uh, that is still the game. And as long as there's contact in hockey and hitting, uh, you're going to get those once in a while. So you just got to be prepared for that. And um, I mean, it, it is what it is, man. That's hockey for you. Keep your head up, guys. If you play hockey, keep your friggin' head up, uh, especially when you got a, a six foot eight monster on the ice playing defense against you. That's for sure. Remember that guy Don Cherry? I think it was his name. That was his yeah. line, man. Keep your head up, kid. Keep um, your head up. When that uh, that goal light went off, I was hoping it was one nothing, but actually Drysital scored for Edmonton, um, and then thirty five seconds later, um, Adam Brooks power play goal. So it's one one. In the okay. second period between the Leafs and the Oilers. And while I'm at it, we'll do a little out-of-town scoreboard. Uh, Rangers are up 3-1 on the Penguins in the second. Caps are up 2-1 against Buffalo in the second. Uh, as I said, Leafs and Oilers tied at 1. Sharks and Wild tied at 0 that game. Um, looks like it just started not too long ago. And then later on tonight, we've got the Hawks and Red Wings, Predators, and the Sp- Stars. Um, actually, I don't know if that game's going on because I believe. Oh yeah, that is going on. So this no, is it is. First it's the game. first game for the Dallas Stars tonight, bud. Their very so first game. Their very first game. They're a little bit behind. They they had a bunch of games postponed again because of the COVID protocol. So um, they're finally starting their season up, which is great. Um, Golden Knights and Coyotes uh, later tonight, and then the Avalanche and the Ducks. Um, what else outside of all the stuff we've covered right now? I feel like. Um, it's been a pretty fun start to the season so far. Um, I don't think we're going to see any specific team dominate per se the whole season. I mean, Montreal is looking real good, but it's it. There's just too much hockey, too much hockey in, in such a short period of time, and too many teams trying to 
get out of a funk before it gets too late because we're seeing a lot of three games and four nights and back-to-backs. So uh, it's fun. It's interesting. I do kind of miss seeing those games like Leafs Chicago, Leafs Detroit, um, some of those Western Coast swings. So far, the Canadian thing, you know, it's it's um, it's done well. It's been exciting. Still too early, I feel, for any major rivalries to, to have been rehashed. Um, I feel like people are putting too much on the Leafs in the Oilers series. I, yeah, Matthews, McDavid, I, it, I don't see it being a big rivalry between these two teams. I'd rather see Edmonton-Calgary, to be honest. Um, if I'm going to want a rivalry, I want to see it between Toronto and Ottawa. I want that to be, you know, reborn. And the Leafs in Montreal, I really don't care about the Oilers. I mean, I love watching McDavid play, but shit, nobody wants to see McDavid score and punish your team along with Dreisaitl and company. So, yeah, that that I wouldn't call that a, um, any sort of a rivalry, but they are saying, you know, everybody's expecting a fast-paced game between the Leafs and the Oilers because they're two really fast teams, a lot of talent. But it's just not as exciting for me. Like, I mean, I love watching McDavid, like I said, but it's not as exciting to watch – as opposed to the other games that we've seen so far. Yeah, uh, just going back to what you said there, man. Don't forget, these guys didn't do any – they did a training camp, right? And yeah. it was like two weeks before the season started, and the season started. Usually, these guys are playing, what, like six ex- exhibition games, uh, Archie, before yeah. beforehand against other teams and other opponents, getting ready, getting geared up and uh, fueled up for the regular season and um, used to the pace of the game. They didn't really have that this year. And I think teams are still trying to find out their identity and find consistency. And that being said, uh, each team is playing their opponent about eight, nine, ten times. So what happens here is a chess match. You're going to learn these opponents. That's why there's not going to be a dominating team, I don't think. Because it's a chess match. You're literally going to know how every player on these team plays, all their little tricks in the book. And you're going to be able to look out for that and go through film, film, film. Each team is going through film every every night, every night, and just watching. So that's why these games are going to be kind of close. That's why you have Colorado right now and L.A. and stuff. That's why they're, they're clashing because it's very new in the season, but – these guys are going to see each other so much that they're going to understand who to shut down, which goalie uh, is which goalie has a weak side, either blocker, glove, or five hole. Which defenseman is the weakest? So you can go like th- it's going to be a chess match all year, and uh, I think it's going to be a pretty crazy Stanley Cup run for whichever team comes through this man. Mm-hmm. And this division is th- like this Canadian division, guys, is crazy, man. A arch like. Yeah, absolutely. Any of these teams, like even Ottawa, like Ottawa looks pretty friggin' good to me. And they're a young team, but they come out and they fight hard every game because they, they're trying to prove something, right? Uh, they're like the Leafs in 2016. Just come out. They And the thing is, what's scary about teams like that is they don't have any pressure on them. So they can just wheel freely and have a good time and learn their teammates and everything and not f- face no repercussions like there, there's no urgency for these kind of guy for this team. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, right now, all the pressure is on Toronto is on Edmonton. And I would say Calgary, Winnipeg's a weird one, but I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I think that the most pressure this year is on Toronto just because of their star studded talent for their off seasons acquisitions and, uh, and their goalies that they got. And it's going to, I think it's a, uh, it's either make or bust for them this year in, unless they make it unless they make it to like the third round. I, I, I don't think Lee fans will be pleased, but <laughs> that being said, I got to hand it to Montreal. Montreal looks good this year. Well-rounded team. Uh, I mean, you got Jake Allen and Carey Price in the back, which is a great goalie duo, man. They're going to be hard to beat just by themselves. You got Weber, Petrie, uh, Sherratt back there who play – really good defensively and are they're shut down guys they don't play the prettiest hockey but man are you scared to go in a corner with those friggin guys they're gonna get, they're gonna rough you up and give you a run and especially don't stand in front of the net as we've seen with austin matthews uh Shira and weber gave him a couple uh, cross checks in the back there yeah. get the hell out of here uh and then their forward depth uh nick suzuki looks like the real deal man 
and uh, Gallagher uh, plays the way he does. Armia, these guys have uh, these guys have a good team going forward, and they're going to be hard to beat. And they play hard on top of all that. So I uh, I think that so far, just from what I'm seeing, I think that Montreal, Toronto, and I got to think that Calgary. I mean, Calgary is kind of on the hot stove too. They've been knocking on the door for how long, Archie? The Monahans, yeah. the Goudreaux, the Kachucks, the Giordanos. Now they have Markstrom in net. They have no excuse now, man. They got to do something this year too. Like it's uh, it's go time for the Canadian divisions, man, and the rivalries. So if if Winnipeg had the the same defense they had two three years ago, then I would say it's Winnipeg's go uh, do or die too. But with Bufflin and Truba leaving, and the uh, and their only longest lasting defenseman is Morrissey now. I mean, and then Line is out with this injury all of a sudden. It's hard for them, man. And uh, it is what it is. But hockey, hockey is uh, is definitely is definitely going to be exciting to watch this year. And it's going to be a lot of chess matches, man. So just get used to that and enjoy it. Uh, there's only four months of hockey this year, so I'm just we're just embracing it, right? It's funny you mentioned Winnipeg a couple times there, and and Line a specifically. I feel like. I don't know how I feel about Patrick Line, to be honest with you. Oh, we got another one. All right. Two on leaps. Um, so I don't know. Is, how there, I feel- is, is, there a, is there a Tonka noise that goes Wah, when we got scored against Arch? <laughs> no, it's silent. <laughs> <laughs> so Patrick Line has got to be one of the players that I really dislike. And it comes down to he has. A lot of talent, a lot of skill. He could be an amazing player. But, man, I hate to say it, he's such a bitch. Like, he just <laughs> – he whines and whines, and it's like, oh, feel sorry for me. I'm in Winnipeg. Dude, enough with the sob story. Take this team and do something with it. Be a star. Be a superstar for your team. He's just soft. He's soft. To me, he's not He's not what he made himself out to be. He could be, but he's not. He's not showing it at all. Um, I feel like he's like a drama queen. Like if he breaks a nail, he's out of the lineup and he's not going to play. Like, I don't get it. It's, it's just so weird. Um, so I, I really, you feel bad for the jets because they, like you said, they kind of dismantled their defense and, and it's a team that kind of doesn't really have, um, a specific direction in which they might be going right now. Um, and I'm still curious to know what, what the playoff format's even going to be. Like we haven't even. They still haven't said anything about it. I don't even think they know yet um, because yeah. I'm curious. After all it's said and done, um, when I look at the the score app, for example, the standings are kind of funny, and it looks like it's going to be top two teams from each division are guaranteed in and then some sort of a best, I guess, eight other teams. Like I don't know how it's going to work, but yeah. then it comes down to cross-border travel. At that point, are they going to say, okay, we have to have a, a, a two-week gap? before we can start the playoffs or maybe not because the U S doesn't care. I can guarantee you they will shift the entire playoff to the U S and we will not see playoff hockey in Canada um, because you can't have an all Canadian playoff. It won't make sense. So Archie, Archie, the players will be vaccinated by that time, buddy. Well, yeah, that, that may be the case, but the, the, yeah. the province wide stipulations. Law, might be, yeah. Yeah. For mean, sure, like, yeah. Lockdowns and whatnot. So I feel like the playoffs will eventually shift fully in the U S um, at which point we'll start to see some, you know, playoffs hockey between other teams and whatnot. Um, yeah. But it'd be nice to have some sort of direction as to how the standings are even being looked at. Like we don't know, and I'm not going to go based on an app. Um, but by the way, Jimmy VC scored on that one. Uh, okay. so two one Leafs. Um, All right, so we're getting some scoring from yeah. our, uh, you know, our, our top end talent here that's supposed to pick up the slack for Austin Matthews. Hopefully playing a good game right now, but it seems like uh, there's some other studs stepping up for us and Jimmy VC and Adam Brooks, right? So, yep. hey, man, that's what you need, man. Uh, when one of your big guys go down in any league, in any sports team, somebody's got to be the hero. Someone's got to step up and take advantage of the opportunity. And I'm glad to see that, uh, especially Adam Brooks, come in first game of the year and scores the goal first one. So it's a monkey off his back, and uh, that's really good for him. And just to a few more of our comments here, we got Graham chiming in. Yeah, hockey. Uh, your brother, sup, boys. Um, 
He posted a quick correction on his next comment, so I'll post the original comment. Just watch the hit. Looks, what he meant to say was dirty. Looks dirty to him. Um, he's happy no. about the uh, Battle of the East. And we've got uh, Talisa chiming in. I'm just happy to have hockey back, Team Funk and all. She's a Bruins fan, so what she says oh, doesn't good. matter. But anyways, <laughs> she loves to bicker with me and tell me how the Bruins, I mean, I can't argue because the Bruins own the Leafs. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen in the playoffs if that happens this year. Um, but yeah, like it's uh, like you said, it's good to see some of the younger guys stepping up, some of the unsung heroes on the Leafs, for example, stepping up when they need to and, and yep. filling in those key roles uh, at the right times. Um, couple things to go over real quick here, guys. As always, every week, we just let you know uh, we've got plenty of shows on every day of the week. We've added a new one uh, to the lineup called Whiskey Cinema. Uh, funny show if you're into guys who just drink whiskey, different types of mixed <laughs> drinks, and just talk anything and everything about movies, Hollywood, actors. Uh, be sure to chime in, and I will show you guys that uh, schedule here. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for. Whoa. Tell them I'm ready in the opponent. The crown heavy and every minute is chosen. A path only fit for kings, and you don't know what this court means. What did you win this for? If it isn't getting more rings, then you're gonna have to switch your team. Uh, trust me, it gets more mean. I'm a nightmare going up against your dreams. First step is explosive like a bomb hit. Bet if I let it fly, I cannot miss. And you ain't got a chance at the top 10 when you're getting clamped all night by your locksmith. On the block, throwing lobs to my top bigs. I'm a chef, no look, what's the top dish? Tie game, through the pressure as the clock ticks. Cross from a step back, hit a shot, switch. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Tell them that's what we ready for. Whoa. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti ball? Be ready for Whoa. This is how champions are made, but it never happens in a day. It's all hard work, but it's why what happens when we play nine out of ten. And of course, if you're on social media, which you most likely are, if you're watching the show, we really appreciate it. If you follow, like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff that this video tells you to do. Get the Lambo car, house in the hills with the stars, told you I'd raise the bar, told you that I'd go far. And we are back uh, for a couple more seconds here. A few more comments. Um, your brother says Brooks' first NHL goal. Absolutely. Like we were saying, great to see that. I mean, no better person to score than a guy playing in his first game. Usually happens against the Leafs, which is amazing. Um, which I wanted to mention earlier. Um, I missed it. Couldn't be a part of that conversation last week. Tim Stutzle, the German. Yes. His first goal was probably one of the most epic first goals I've ever seen. Like, Caught it off the bounce, and I'm sure you play hockey. It, that is not easy to do, man. No. And even Jack Campbell gave him props on that one, saying, you know, it sucks I didn't save it, but, man, that was a beautiful goal. And um, off the bounce to just bat it like that and beat a goalie just straight up, uh, beauty first goal. I was really happy to see it. It was like, buddy, that puck was like 25 feet in the air coming <laughs> down, man. <laughs> And uh, Talisa, of course, she's watching because she chimed in and said, and they'll own Toronto this year too, no doubt. They'll come. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The only thing I have to say about that is uh, you don't have Chara no more. You don't have Tori Krug no more. And uh, Craigie's getting older. I mean, Pasternak will be back soon, but Bergeron Pasta and uh, Marshawn is – is what you got to look forward to. And we'll see. I, I, no, you know what? No matter what, Boston Bruins are still a good team. They, uh, they, were the, they had the highest record in the NHL last year going into the bubble. So <laughs> anything can happen. I mean, they're a little bit depleted on defense. But, um, I mean, when you got Marshawn, Bergeron, and Pasternak uh, playing as your top three guys, 
anything can happen, man. Those guys are phenomenal hockey players. They're you, one of the best 200 foot players in the league is Bergeron, Selkie Award winner. Um, and then Marshawn and Pasternak are just dynamite on two on ones, power plays, and five on five is even really decent with them. So, yeah, you, everyone has a chance. And uh, I, I just hope that uh, the Leafs have a little bit of drive and, and grab a little bit of character from a little bit of the way that the way that line plays, just get goals in big moments and carry the team on their shoulders. So I'll give you that Boston's a good team still, but depleted defense. I'm hoping Toronto takes advantage of it. If we meet them in the playoffs, just saying. And you mentioned it. Pasternak is back and boy, is he back that shootout goal or he scored the other night. I think it was last night. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. I hate seeing it, but I love seeing it. It was just like, you go in hard and then you just little floater over the goalie, leaving him absolutely helpless. Dude, he's talked about a lot, Archie, but I still think he's underrated, man. Like not he's oh, they don't consider him like a top ten or fifteen star. He's like more of that twenty to twenty five guy, I think. Mm-hmm. And dude, Pasta that okay. I hate Boston Bruins, okay? I friggin' hate their guts. I'm telling you right now, I I have Man, I, I can't even get over some of the shit that they've done to us over the over the years, especially in the last uh, eight years. But I gotta say, out of that whole team, I do really like I do really like Pasternak. Pasternak is pretty cool. I like his I kind of like his uh, story, his life story, his bio is really cool, and uh, his his tape job can use a little bit of work, obviously. But um, even the story behind that is kind of cool. But man, he can dangle. He, like within 10 feet of the net, he is dangerous, man. He's got a great shot. He can dangle as good as, as any best player, you know, comparing to Crosby's or Patrick Haynes around the net. And he loves the between the legs kind of moves. Right. So, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, inflating his tires a little bit here, but I, I think he's probably like a top, probably like a top 10 to top 12 player in the league. I got to say. Yeah, I'm going to stop you right there. Your brother's even calling you out saying, is he on the Boston Love waiter? And he's got the little emoji there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a wrap from us, man. So uh, great episode. Uh, we can catch the last bit of Leaf game. Hopefully a Leaf win. They are still a couple minutes left in the second. Hopefully a nice big third period for the boys. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. We got we to gotta get one. What, what's our record right now, man? Three and two. Three and two. Three and two, and I believe the Oilers are two and three. Yeah, two and And three. The pesky pesky Habanarians are uh, they're they're undefeated. Well, they're not undefeated. Sorry, but they have they haven't lost in regulation this year. So good on them. I think they're three zero and one or something right now, or three zero and two, some some number like that. But uh, you know, as a Toronto fan, three zero and two as a Toronto fan. I'm hoping they pick up a, a big L uh, in the next couple of days for sure, because I don't want them running away from anything here. I want this to be a nice tight division. And if anybody's running away with anything in this division, it's got to be the Toronto Maple Leafs. Absolutely. <laughs> and I hey, have high hopes. <laughs> a win tonight, a win tonight puts us right up there with Montreal tied at eight points. I mean, it's, it's early, but it's going to be a fun race. Um, so yeah, that said, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, yeah, next week, next Friday. And, um, we'll have a little chat and see where we're at. Uh, then hopefully no more nonsense in the NHL. Gary Bettman, get your shit together. We don't want to see any of this anymore. Let the boys play. Let mm-hmm. the be played. It's already bad enough. The season's short and a bit of a chaotic one. Let the guys play and do their thing. Um, as Sean says here, let's go Leafs. Of course, as always, Archie here, Wade with me by my side, and we will catch you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Ciao, guys. Take care.